In this video, we're gonna be using Citrus, which is a stock FL Studio plugin, and we're gonna be making some mellow lo-fi sounds. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So it's been a while since I've done any Citrus sound design tutorials and I wanted to do another one for you guys. I've been kind of on a lo-fi kick recently, so I decided to make some mellow lo-fi type sounds. If you're new to the channel or if you're new to Citrus, uh, a while ago I did do a complete walkthrough of the whole plugin. Now Citrus is a pretty crazy synth, there's a lot to learn about, so that is a pretty in-depth long tutorial, I think it's about 25 to 30 minutes. But if you guys want to check that out, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video as well as on the screen right now for you. As I mentioned before, Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin, it comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition on. So as long as you have at least the producer edition of FL Studio, you'll be able to use Citrus and follow along in this tutorial. I don't wanna to talk too much, so let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do when you have Citrus loaded up is click this button here, go down to presets, go to default, and this is gonna get us a basic sine wave, which is gonna sound like this. Cool, so once we've done that, let's go ahead and go into our volume tab and make sure you go into the envelope and click this button down here to enable the envelope. So I'm just gonna basically shape the attack, decay, sustain, and release. So let's drag this over here. This is the attack. And I'm going for kind of uh, not an immediate attack, but not necessarily a slow attack. And then I wanna drag the sustain down so that there is some sustain in the sound, but it's also kind of got like a little bit of a pluckiness to it. And then I wanna drag the release out quite a bit. Uh, and what this does is every time I let go of the note, it kind of has almost like a reverb effect where it takes a while to for the note to actually stop playing. So I'm going for kind of more of an organic feel, I guess, with this. So the next thing I want to do is actually go into my effects tab. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And by default, we have uh, a chorus going on. Um, which actually sounds pretty cool. I kind of like that, uh, but you may notice down here on the correlation meter that it's really messing with the mono compatibility. Um, that's kind of what choruses do. So I'm actually going to bring this up one more voice to five. And then I think the way around this is I can turn the effects down a little bit on here. So let's turn it to about 60%. And yeah, that pretty much fixes the problem. Um, so that, that seems pretty good. But what I really want to do was add some reverb. So let's go ahead and turn the reverb on. Sounds pretty good. Uh, maybe I can bring this up a little bit, uh, the reverb room size. And let's mess with the reverb decay as well a little bit, the decay time. So about 2.5 seconds sounds pretty good to me. All right, so let's go back into our operator one. Let's go ahead and go into our pitch tab. Now this is the part where we're getting sort of this lo-fi sound because we're gonna create this sort of warping sound with the LFO. The LFO in here is kind of weird. So let's delete all these points and then we can just drag this up or down. I'll just drag it up. And then we're gonna need to set uh, the speed. So let's go ahead and link it to the tempo and I'll just click global as well. And then I'll just kind of, uh, well, first I need to bring this back so that it's starting at, I guess, zero, if you will. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely the right tempo, and uh, that's just kind of going crazy, though. So this is the pitch envelope, this little knob up here. So we can bring this down to about 20 cents, and you can kind of hear that warping effect right there. So obviously, you can do more or less with this, and it kind of depends, like if you're wanting to play chords, you're probably gonna want less, but if you're wanting to do more of like leads, just plucking one note, then you may wanna bring this up a little bit, maybe to like 50 cents or 40 cents, something like that. All right, cool, so at this point we have really a bunch of different options of kind of how we can proceed from here. I mean, the sound actually sounds pretty cool and nice the way that it is, but we can also mess with the wave shape if we want. So let's click this wave shape here. And we can just kind of start dragging it down a little bit 
and you'll see we're starting to get more of a triangle wave shape and we're getting some harmonics being added onto it. So obviously the more we pull this down and the more the wave shape, shape turns into a saw wave, the less organic it sounds. And you know, we could do square. All, all these don't really sound that great for what we're going for here. So let's go ahead and bring it back down to a sine wave. We could also mess with these buttons down here. could also play with the tension a little bit. This is kind of like adding a little bit of, I guess, distortion almost adds these harmonics like this. Uh, and that can actually sound pretty cool. That may be something you might want to mess with. So we could also mess with the skew here. Kind of sounds more like synth wave. Now, what I would actually probably do is go into our oscillator tab. It, we're still in operator one here. And you can see we have our uh, fundamental sine wave. That's this one note right there. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see all these black places are octaves. And then we can kind of just put uh, one, maybe a couple octaves up. And you can see on the graph here, those harmonics. And it kind of gives it just this glassy bell sort of sound. So that could be a pretty cool sound to maybe play around with. Now we could also add more harmonics and it doesn't have to be on the octaves. We can add them pretty much anywhere. And the more we add, the more bellish it's gonna sound or I guess metallic. So let's get rid of those for now. Now another thing that I could do is actually go into my RM and we can RM operator one by operator two. So just turn this all the way up. And that kind of gives it another like glassy effect, I guess. But uh, the problem is we'd have to get rid of that lower frequency down there. Um, so we'd have to put like a high pass filter on it, but that could be kind of cool. Now let's say we wanted to do more of uh, like a Rhodesy sound, like a Rhodes or like an E piano, something like that. Um, we could add some harmonics closer to the fundamental. So just kind of play around with it. And if you move these up, it really changes the sound pretty drastically. So you may wanna spend some time experimenting with that, finding a sound that you like. And then we can also actually mess with the phase, which is gonna sound the, uh, or change the sound pretty drastically as well. Anyway, that sounds pretty nice. I think I'm gonna kind of stick with this sound right here. So let's go back into our operator one volume envelope tab, and uh, let's just mess with this a little bit. We can bring this either closer so that it's like a, a strong attack. So that's pretty cool. We could even bring this out farther. Give it a slower attack. I think I like it right about there. We could extend this uh, release time. That sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make something out of this. Today, 